All right, YouTubers, welcome back. My name's Dave, and you found Do It Yourself, Do It Right. And well, got my Honda hat back on for the first time in a while. Standing in front of the racer. No shit, Sherlock. Or what I call the racer. I refer to as the racer, even though it's more of a brat style bike. It's one of my two forever bikes. I'll never get rid of this. This is the first Honda that I ever really worked on or built or tore apart and put back together numerous times. I'm about to do it again, so that's always fun. Uh, anyways, got a couple of issues. Actually, one issue and one thing that I want to install on the bike. Uh, so, let's get into it. What's the issue, you might ask? Well, last summer, I took about a week and I went over the whole bike, wiring harness. It's got a new wiring harness on it. Uh, got the uh, headlights working. Well, the headlights always work. The blinkers, I didn't have blinkers on it. I didn't have brake lights. I had a tail light. I went through and made sure all that stuff worked. And well, now for some reason, I could turn that off actually. For some reason, my left side blinker, not blinking, the light's on, nobody's home. Look at you cracking jokes, you cool little cucumber. The right side blinks, because you can, you know, see it blinking. So, I want to try to figure that thing out, what the problem is there. I don't know. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm, it worked and now it doesn't. So, okay. And the other thing I want to do is I want to put a horn back on the bike. The bike hasn't had a horn in, well, since I bought it. In 2016, 17. So those are the, uh, the two goals. Uh, for today or this video there's some other things I want to do on it but I'll make sure the video doesn't get too long so all right let's uh let's uh, I'm gonna you know get to get to actually pulling this thing apart so I can start riding again for both of these issues I'm gonna have to take the tank off um, I think I'm gonna reroute these wires because I don't have it routed properly so I'm probably going to be doing a lot of plugging in, unplugging. There, I got a whole video of a, you know wiring up a CB360. I did this past winter, so I'm not going to show a lot of that. Uh, but I will show when I get to the point of putting that horn on, you know where that wiring is because I know a lot of people ask questions about. You know, I got leftover wires here, and I got wires there. I don't know where they're going. I get a lot of questions about that. So once I get the tank off, once I get to this wiring stuff kind of situated, I'll uh, I'll bring you back and show you what I'm working with. Jesus Christ! Tank's off, and I've unearthed the wires for the horn. Now the wires on this CB360 is going to be like a mint colored green and a black. Uh, they're usually right here in the middle somewhere. I had mine taped up in here. Don't mind these other two wires that are down here. They'll get taped back up in there. That's actually for the... Uh, this bike actually had a clutch... Um, neutral safety switch that I disengaged but I still have the wire ran to here for some stupid reason not sure why uh, in my stock of parts this is what made me realize I should probably put a horn on it I found the little 
wiring harness doodad that goes from two male bullet connectors to two slider spade connectors. So, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Mint green, old mint green goes to new mint green. Plug it in, clicks. Uh, the old one, plug it in, clicks. Hopefully everything that I have wired up here for the horn is correct. And now you just plug it in. Really easy, just, you know, slide, slide, slippity slide. Turn it on. Hopefully the horn works. Wow, that's pretty. Ah, damn. That's a pretty freaking lap. Good lord. That's a loud horn. So, all right. Now it mounts over here where the switch is. So I'll have to get a couple of tens, loosen up that switch mount, mount it up. Nut it up. That's what she said. <laughs> Get it situated up front there. And that'll be, um, you know, good to go. Um, which also leads me to, this is the flasher for the lights that aren't flashing. Well, that side's not flashing. This side is, which makes me believe that it's not the flasher. That's the problem. I'm going to flip-flop these. Don't think it matters. Let's see. Hmm, still flashing there. No flash there. So it's definitely not the flasher that's the problem. It's definitely going to be a wiring issue somewhere. I'm guessing that it's probably grounded out somewhere. So let me uh, knock this horn out, get the horn out of the way first. And then I'm going to undo all these wires that are actually supposed to be right here. These controls are supposed to come down, feed into the mount that's, or feed into the big wire junction here, not up front there. So I wanna, I'm gonna get that situated the way it's supposed to. Horn is situated. It literally just bolts up with the two bolts that go through the switch assembly. The switch housing, I should say. And after I do stuff like this, I always check to make sure that it still works. So I'm going to hit the horn. Still works. Alright, turn that off. And I was being a little bit proactive. So I took the headlight out. And just kind of rooting around inside the headlight with that rat's nest of wires and came across the problem and the problem was I'm kind of a as I guess you'd say and well I uh, I know that the wires from both switch housings they're supposed to run down and around to the backbone here and this big plug assembly here that's got like a it's got like a big plastic uh i wish i could get a better picture better show you it's got like a big plastic wow well, you can see it there that is actually supposed to be up here but this one is so short here that's the reason why I ran it up into the big headlight. Now this is an aftermarket headlight. <laughs> Getting quite the thunderstorm. This is aftermarket headlight. It's got a big, huge opening. So I just shoved it up in here. Well, the part that comes to me being a dummy was it jumped out at me right away as soon as I saw it. So you got this big wire harness comes up, then you got the other one that comes up, and that's where all these lights connect into. That's this wiring here. 
Well, if you see this black guy here, this black and, I think it's white, black and, yeah, it's black and white. That's a power wire. That's a key on wire, so as soon as you turn the key on, it's, it's live. Well, for some reason, I don't know why, I had it plugged into the orange and white wire, and it was just kind of like way out here in the middle of nowhere, and I'm like, well, that's odd. Why is there a black wire plugged into an orange and white wire? Unplugged it. Turn the switch on. Wow, it's really raining cats and dogs out there. Turn the switch on. Hit the blinker. Guess what it's doing? It's blinking. So I think, well, I don't think I know that this power wire was supplying power to that circuit the whole time. So when you turn the blinker on, it just on the whole time rather than blinking. If you guys know how the blinkers work, it, it puts power into the system, it builds up, builds up, builds up. And then the, the relay lets loose. It's too much power, too much power. Let's loose flashes you know electric electricity goes through the wires flashes the you know the light comes on bing, and then it goes down and blinks and then it does it again it sends power 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 too much electricity and it lets it loose and then it flashes and that's kids how blinker relays work uh-huh and how long have you thought that the whole time. I've thought that the whole time. So when you supply them with power the whole time, they're not going to work. So, what I thought was going to be a grounding issue was actually a me issue. I, I would have swore to God that these blinkers were working last summer. I don't know. I guess... Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Well, so they're working now and the horn is working. So I'm gonna button all this stuff up. I'm gonna do my best to clean this up because these wires gotta go up in here. I'm gonna do something better with this relay, blinker relay here so it's not dangling. Just uh, clean this up and uh, show you the end product. Let me show you this. Uh, tidy up job that I did hopefully I can slide the tank on and not have to move wires around uh, but this is typically how I route my wiring this is the uh, little back strap this is your tank rubber your tank slide down there so I try to keep stuff away this might be in the way but we'll see and then I just tidied this up zip tied some stuff and I wrap some more electrical tape around up here where it was starting to fray don't need any nicked wires this um this bike from the get-go i tried to use when i first built it i tried to use the original wiring harness it was all chopped up i put a new spark moto wiring harness on it years ago uh it's, it's held up pretty well there's uh there was some issues with it when i first put it together uh, the wiring wasn't exactly correct. The colors were a little wrong. They've since fixed the uh, the the mix-up. I've used the uh, Spark Motos on I think two other. Oh no. Two, yeah, two other CB360s, and I believe I got a uh, XS650 wiring harness from them as well. So pretty good stuff. Uh, let's try to slide this tank on. Hopefully I don't have any issues. This tank is almost full of petrol. All right, we'll see how she lines up. Make sure the wires aren't gonna get pinched up underneath here. Looks bueno on that side. Looks all right on this side. Switch, that switch wire might be in the way. Or maybe not. All right, it's, it is in. 
nice and flush. I'll pull the seat back a little bit. This rubber with this seat is not the not the most ideal, but I've had to tank on and off enough. The rubber, the rubber knows what it's supposed to do. Bing, bang, boom. Tank is on. No issues. This is uh, this is a lot easier than I uh, than I anticipated. Just a heads up, guys. I went to uh, put my fuel tubing back on, and I noticed that my my idle adjuster is loose. And I'm like, oh, what the heck? So my uh, my filter uh, filter bowl, <laughs> my fuel float bowl screw is loose. That's how much these bikes vibrate. You got to go through and do a nut and bolt check every once in a while. I mean, I've been fiddle farting around with these this car, these carburetors forever. It seems like. I guess I didn't mess with mess around with them too much last year. And it's vibrated loose, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, tighten that up. Maybe look at some more stuff to make sure it's not rattling loose. All right, folks, there you have it. Something that I thought was gonna be a little bit more difficult was actually not difficult at all. And that's the way it seems to be going for me. Uh, I thought one project was gonna be an easy project and it's turned into not an easy project. And that's the Ford. I got valve covers off. I got bent push rods it's it's not good for the old girl right now i'll show you the push rods if you guys are if you guys are tuning in for the old ford you know stay tuned i got a video coming and look at that this one not good that one i was straightening them out to try to measure them not good this one eh, not that bad so i went went ahead and ordered a whole set of push rods to put in the old girl so in the meantime i figured work on the honda so if you guys like working on old stuff whether it's a motorcycle whether it's a car you guys should be tuning in you guys should you guys should be subscribing i know that i would probably say three quarters of you guys that watch my videos are not subscribing so it's easy you just hit the subscribe button it's free doesn't cost any money you can hit the notification bell and that'll tell you when i drop new videos either on an old motorcycle the old Ford, if you're turning in, if you're tuning in for the first time, was my father's car. Probably should have put the garage door down because now the garage is going to be all wet. My old Ford, and then I got a couple of new Harleys that I work on. My Nissan outside that I do stuff with a four wheeler under the cover that I'm, you know, that's my plowing rig, so I don't really need to work on. I don't really need to use that or mess around with that. So, like I said. You guys like this old stuff, this new stuff. You should be subscribing. Really, uh, really helps my channel out. Gets it out to the YouTube, uh, you know, the YouTube world. Uh, I got over a thousand subscribers. I'm like at 11.75 or something like that. So thank you for you guys that have been subscribing. Thank you for the guys that you know keep tuning in, watching my videos. Hopefully they're entertaining. If not, I, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, so. Like I said before, like, tag, share, follow, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And like always, till next time, thanks a lot.